Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. She's all fired up. I may be. Yeah, we did a video the other day talking about Image Comics starting this union. And now Image has made a statement. Uh, doesn't seem like they're going to recognize this union. We're going to talk about kind of how Image Comics works, uh, what it was founded on, and the news that uh, Todd McFarlane is launching his own TV production unit because of course he is. Mm -hmm. Of course he is. Can't blame him. This is, this is the, uh, the main catalyst or one of the main catalysts behind Image Comics and he's been incredibly successful and he definitely just does what he wants to do. Start a toy company, start a line of comic books, uh, he's got a ridiculous amount of money mm -hmm. and he's gonna do whatever the hell he wants to do and he's not gonna be told by a bunch of 25-year-old editorial assistants what he can and can't publish. I guarantee you that. You know, it's not going to fly with a guy like this. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 239,000 subs. Woo there we go. See, we everybody missed See, the woohoo. Woo the woohoo. 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 Uh, yeah, so... We do talk about the comic book industry, having worked in the comic book industry. Uh, oh, I know. It's blows people's minds. Like, you're just being so negative about American comics and, you, and saying horrible things and, and, and calling them out on their bullshit. Yeah, well, you know what, sweet cheeks? At least we worked in the industry. <laughs> yeah, we try not to be negative. But look, things are not... Negativity and honesty are not always the same thing. No, things are not that great. And especially from a, a creative, uh, the creative side of it, you know, working for a lot of these publishers, the page rates are stagnant or down from what they used to be. I mean, mm -hmm. I heard a couple of days ago about the page rates that uh, Marvel and DC are paying now. And I'm like, oh my God, they're less than they were 10, 15 years ago. Right. And then you have people that are office staff complaining they want paid more. Now, some of the things they're asking for in this in this situation, I don't disagree with. I think some of the things are fair and I think, you know, it's reasonable requests. And then there's things that I'm like, oh, hell no. Yeah. So let's let's talk uh, more about this, this union. Now, uh, Image did issue a statement. For those of you who are not aware, a couple days ago, uh, the office staff, of Image Comics. The office staff. The office staff. Not the creators, not the owners, not the people doing the lion's share of the work. The office staff. The office staff, all nine of them, decided they were going to form a union, and they put out a very lengthy list of demands. Now, when I first read about it, I thought this was going to be some sort of uh, union for freelancers, because in a lot of cases, you know, freelancers are, you know, uh, you know, underpaid, I think, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're working on projects that could potentially become like a billion dollar movie. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be better compensation, but that's also up to the individual creator who is a contractor to get a damn good agent or a damn good well, deal. Well, and also if you agree to it, you agreed to it. You agreed and to it. And sadly, because there are so many people who undervalue their work so much and will just be happy to have any pedestal, I mean, uh, job, that they'll take, they'll work for peanuts just to make sure they have that that mouthpiece. I mean, job, you know, and then it runs the rates down for everyone. So this, you know, coming on the heels of Striketober, lots of companies announcing that they're going to unionize. Uh, uh, Let's hear where those companies are in a year or two. Yeah, I know some tabletop companies said they were going to unionize too. And again, it's a lot of office staff. And look, you know, I want to be clear. I'm not anti-union. No, we're not. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, unions have a place when the, you know, either it's a highly specialized skill you know, that runs the risk of, of you being, you know, underpaid and overworked or the working conditions are deplorable. Uh, but most white collar office staff, I don't I don't think they need to I don't know. I mean, I think they have some valid points in among what they're asking for, if if it's true what they're saying. And then they have some points that are just like, this is ridiculous. You, who the hell do you think you are? Yeah, yeah. And number nine is where well, it was we'll, all going. We'll get to those in a minute, but let's go through the list. Okay, so this is, first we're going to talk about uh, Image's okay, yes. response They had a this. statement. Yeah, Image has always believed in the fair and equitable treatment of staff and has always strived to support employees to the best of our company's ability with regard to their employment. To the best of our company's ability. Right. Now, here's the thing about Image. A lot of people who maybe don't know how Image is set up, how it actually works. It's not really like a traditional publisher. Image is basically a bunch of independent creators putting together teams or having their own studios, like in the case of, you know, Todd McFarlane. And then, you know, they put the books together and then they release the books. Under that banner. Under that banner. So what do the office staff do? Uh, I think they cat wrangle. 
Do they, you know, I'm, I'm like, are they the creatives? No. Are they basically what makes the image go? No. So I'm like, what do they do? Tweet. They probably tweet an awful lot. I'm just I, like, I so I'm, I'm sitting here like, okay, well, here's their list of, of, of demands um, that may potentially include a lack of salary and workload transparency. Well, I saw the company can pay you to the best of their ability. Here's my suggestion. If you're not getting paid enough and you don't like your workload, then you quit and you find another job. Um, there are plenty of them right now. Uh, workload transparency. Okay, to a point, I agree with this. You should be told, we've run into it. I think everybody's run into it. It's not just comics where companies get rid of people and then they don't replace them and they dump the work onto other people. That's everywhere. It's not right, but it's everywhere. Yep. Um, low morale and overwork. Again, that's everywhere. I mean... Personally, I believe in paying people fairly, and I believe, you know, in trying to balance as best you can. We try that with people that we have work for us. But, you know, again, if you don't like it, you can quit. And you can only do what you can do. I mean, you know, the comic book industry is not in the greatest of shape right now, despite, you know, all these sites trying to be like, hey, comics are doing great. Look, one or two comics sold, you know, a couple hundred thousand copies. That means everybody's <laughs> doing great. Like even Spawn, you know, that that's Image's you know biggest hit this year, I believe, like 400,000 copies or something like that. But I'm like, that's Todd McFarlane's studio. Mm -hmm, that's, that's not... Image as a whole, that's his studio producing that book. Right. So it's yeah. not these people in the office that no. are yelling about it. Now, I will say um, that as people, well, you worked on different things. One thing I will say that happens, they talk about crunch time later on. We'll talk about that in a minute, is that it does trickle down. Yeah. That oh, does yeah. happen. So I'm, I'll give them that because um, if, if, like, there's a schedule for a book, okay, and say mm -hmm. you have a month to do it, and the penciler takes extra time, and then the, that puts the inker behind, and the inker has to take extra time, and then down the line, down the line, you know, when it gets to the person at the very end finishing up the book, it's like, shit, I have two days, and I have to cram, two, you know, 48 hours and not sleep to get this out. Yeah. So uh, that does happen. However, the rest of the month, you didn't have to sit there and cram that out. But you know what I mean? Yeah, but again, it's like I'm not trying to say that the the office staff doesn't do anything. That's that I know that's not true, but you know they're not the ones probably pulling the all nighters to get the colors done, get the letters done. You know they're probably are freelancers that are doing that, mm -hmm. uh, not the office staff. Now, if this you know included the freelancers, like this is what we're going to mandate the page rates are. That's a whole nother. That's a whole other thing. Uh, but also, you know, again, that's hard with Image because most of these deals are, you know, they're creator-owned comics. Uh, a lot of them, it's up to the creative team, the writer, the creator, whoever, to pay their team. Uh, and so the page rates are all over the place. Well, how is it done? Is it done, like, on the back end? Is it done, how do they do the, the, the payouts for these? Uh, I'm assuming, it depends. I think everybody's deal is different, but uh, I, I, I'm assuming that most of the, they do the payouts, you know, when they sell the books or whatever, if it's a back end deal. But I think most creative teams are responsible. Like Todd McFarlane pays his artists to work right, on his Right, right. I meant like in general. But I mean, yeah. anyway, so they're saying a lack of communication regarding publisher priorities. Okay, I'll agree with you with that. You want to know clearly what are you expecting? What do you need so we can make sure we meet expectations? That's fair. Um, new positions not opened up to the current staff before the, oh, they want any new position opened up to the current staff before public. Again, you know what? I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, a lot of companies do that. Yeah, but also the other the other thing, again, being, you know, the entertainment industry, being publishing industry and being a sales-driven industry, if they have the chance to get somebody with a proven track record who worked for another company to come in and, you know, run image or something like that. Yeah, but that's like, you're talking like C-level. I'm talking like, you know, any, you know, I think when you get to C-level, you're going to have to have somebody who has the experience. That's just understandable. Not to some people. They, oh, well, like, never mind I, I started as an editorial assistant. I should be the, I should, I be, should the be the editor CEO chief. now. Yeah. I should be the CEO, but no, it's normal for companies to look outside because they're like, well, a lot of we times, though, when there's to... positions, they can't find somebody as qualified internally. They go externally. To a, a point, I think that's fair. Remote working opportunities being withdrawn and a lack of compensation. Okay, well, yeah, because now that they're, they're, a lot of places are bringing people back in. Yeah. Um, and a lack of compensation for supplies used when remote working. Well, welcome to what everybody else has to deal with. A lot of people want remote. 
A lot of people didn't get compensation for supplies. You know how many years teachers spend their own damn money on everything and they don't get compensated for it? And I bet you money you're probably paid more than teachers too. Oh, I'm sure. They're living in Portland. They have to be. Who um, flipping who? Uh, yeah. And what about the freelancers? Like freelancers, everything is on you. That's it. They don't understand. Like if you're a freelancer, you are basically a plumber. You pay all your own expenses. You, you know. You plumbers pay. get paid more though. Plumbers get paid a lot more on average. <laughs> yeah. Saying. Plumbers are in more demand than comic book artists. But yeah. I'm just yeah. like, okay. I mean, I don't see why you can't do remote work for a lot of this stuff. I really don't. But for whatever reason, the company doesn't want that. And I, I just think, you know, welcome to the club. They, you and like most people. The office staff, they probably don't want them working remotely because they know they're just going to tweet all damn day. You know what? That's probably true. If you had behaved better when you when you had the remote work, you might not be in a position now. <laughs> Too many mistakes in production uh, as a result of overwork. Maybe the mistakes in the production were a result of you working remotely and not paying attention to your work. I don't know. I mean, just putting it out there. I'm not saying that's the case. But who the hell knows? A lack of diversity in staff and management. Well, there's not that many of you. Where does the diversity to come in unless which one of you guys are leaving yeah, no, to give somebody else your job? It sounds to me like Image has uh, basically a skeleton crew because, again, most of these books are produced by other you know companies or studios. And who are they supposed to hire if they're only supposed to hire internally first? So how is that going to increase diversity in staff and management? And the next thing is management. A lot of the management for this place are these people who started it up. You don't get to just replace them because they're, they're, they're white guys. It doesn't work that way. And I don't want to know where they're going to get diversity in staff and management when they say they want their, their positions opened up to them first. It doesn't even make sense. I, so much of it. I mean, look, go down the list. And this is what I talked about the other day. This is what this is all about. Number nine. This is what it's all about. Right. The publication work by problematic creators. Okay, here's what it's all about. They want to be able to have to dictate that. Now, yes. they, the same people, okay, I want to know what does that, what constitutes that? You need a rubric with, with very specific uh, things that are, are violations of this before you can dump people. They had a list of complaints, you know, uh, sexual, you know, sex scandals and yeah, but some know, things like racist, are, xenophobic. People can say things that are completely, you know, that aren't bad and they then because somebody takes it that way anything anybody okay anything any of these people could i, I could find their tweets the people that are complaining and i bet you i could find some of the tweets that i could find a way to make them problematic if i wanted to anything it can be it's like the bible you can be used any way you want it to be good or bad same thing with this and i want to know why they don't give you a, a clear cut here are violations that we know list but they're demanding a list of what their what their duties are yeah. Well, if um, you want to list your duties, then you need to give everybody a list of what's, what specific things are in violation with specific examples. And what, what are you going to give a warning system? No. I mean. No, they want the. But they, they want a warning system they, for them to keep their job. They flat out said they want to be able to veto. So let me get this straight. Project. Let me get this straight. The office staff. So the office staff who don't create anything, who aren't taking any of the risks, they might put some stuff together and get some stuff out for marketing and stuff like that, but they don't actually create the, the content. It's all independent people creating the content, doing all the work that, that actually sells and keeps the company in business. They get to decide whose books get published because they're them. Yeah, well, this is this is very current year because we so saw- So they can give their friends deals? Probably. We saw this with Spotify. Uh, Spotify employees thought they could uh, you know, whine and complain until they got rid of Joe Rogan. Uh, we're seeing it with Netflix. Netflix employees think they can whine and complain until they get rid of uh, Dave Chappelle. And Kickstarter had gatekeepers, and they formed a union almost immediately. Like uh, uh, Camilla uh, Zhang came into Kickstarter, and within like, according to that one article we read, within a month or two, got to work on trying to build a union. And one of their their fundamental uh, beliefs was that the the staff should have the ability to cancel any problematic project. Basically, they want to be paid to be gatekeepers. Yes. But it's only but only to their sensibilities and their friends. That's not fair or balanced. And they use the pandemic, Kickstarter used the pandemic to plead poverty to kick her ass out. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I think Image will do if this happens. Now, I can tell you this, this tells me that they're kind of offended. They're kind of like, we're already treating you fairly. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know, I would be like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and I can tell you who else would be like, what the fuck? It'd be Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane would probably be like, 
Hell no. You're because I I can just picture because right now like Frank Miller is problematic because of a comic book he did like ten or twelve years ago that they're saying is uh, you know anti uh, is, Islamic or whatever. And McFarlane is has worked with. Uh, Frank Miller before, I could see them being like, you can't use Frank Miller in a Spawn comic book, Todd, uh, because he's problematic. And Todd McFarlane being like, I built this effing company, you bitches. Mm -hmm. I will I will hire whoever I want to hire and put them on whatever book I want to put them on. You can't tell me what to do. In uh, case you wondered, Neon is a, a, a Big fan of Todd McFarlane. <laughs> I am a huge fan of Todd McFarlane. He, he is one of his idols. Uh, anyway. Todd McFarlane was my idol growing up. Like, I, I'm i like, if I ever get into comics, I ever get into making stuff, I want to be like this guy. Not necessarily the art style, but what always fascinated me about him, and you read these interviews. He didn't take shit. He didn't take shit. His, his business sense. Like, this guy has the best business sense of pretty much anybody who has ever worked in comics ever. And the reason he gets as far as he does and the reason he bra is because he does not take no for an answer. Whiny little bitches in Portland are not going to tell Todd McFarlane what to do. Well, I guarantee Yeah, because, I mean, you know, it's just since a lot of the books that they work with and stuff are ones that were people that, that started it. I mean, who are you going to kick out? And then beyond that, it's like they're so they're so triggered on Twitter by everything. Like you said, things happened 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Well, I guarantee you that, that if you go back 10, 12 years on, you know, some of these people that whine and scream, you can find all kinds of shit on them. Probably tried to delete it, but it's never gone. I, it's just and then in a few years it's gonna flip to something else, and then they're gonna be problematic for some reason. It's stupid. Now, if someone legitimately went out of their way to do something really, really, really shitty, okay, that's different. But when you go look at it, it's very nebulous. Like well, you, you know, what they're basically saying is you voted the way I didn't like. So, you know, that's a problem. Let's just be honest. That's what, that's what it's about. Yeah. They were trying to get rid of IO9 had an article on it. And basically this, they think that the uh, number nine uh, should be number two came about because of, uh, I think it was Ben Temple Smith and Warren Ellis. They want Warren Ellis out of, out of image and all of that junk. And, you know, <sighs> The office staff, it's not up to the office staff to make that decision. It's no. up to the publisher to make that decision. And if you don't like it, quit. Quit. If you think you're overworked and you got you got too many hours or not being transparent, quit. If you think that you need better pay and you're not getting it, quit. If you don't like some of the people that, that, that they're siding with, quit. That's what you tell everybody else to do. Well, wait, then when they don't quit, you go try to campaign to get them fired. You yeah. know what? Just quit then. There's so many other jobs you can go do, and I'm sure they probably pay more, but they don't give you the mouthpiece you think you've earned. And I would back you on some of the things that you guys were asking for. I think that some of the things are kind of fair. But then you have to go and, and put it what it's really about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's about gatekeeping. That's what this is about. That's all about gatekeeping. They, they want the ability to keep out problematic creators because there might be people working on books. Since, again, it is images basically an umbrella for a bunch of smaller studios there are probably people putting together books with people they don't like on them. Remember, gatekeeping is bad unless they're the ones doing it. Then they can gatekeep all day, and that's completely fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I could totally – I could Hypocrite. totally – Hypocrite. Hypocrite meters going off the charts. Yeah, I don't – I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to pretend to know what's going to happen. But knowing uh, Todd McFarlane and the uh, amount of shit that he's willing to put up with, if this actually – happened and he had to run his own books through these gatekeepers, you know, through this comics code authority in Portland, I could totally see him just taking his whole thing and moving out and just being mm -hmm. like, I, I'm taking McFarland Productions. We're our own company. Well, they are technically their own company, but like, I'm going to, I'm going to publish and distribute my own shit and good luck with that and pull mm -hmm. out. Uh, I would, if it were me, I'd be like, you're not going to tell me what I can and can't publish. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. A group of people who don't do, who, who do stuff, but don't, don't, aren't the creative force behind the company. They aren't the ones bringing in the money for the company. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Like you guys aren't even creatives and the whole, the whole purpose of image you're discussing it here in the comments. The whole purpose was these guys wanted complete creative control over their stuff. They wanted the right to be able to publish whatever the hell they wanted to. Uh, they wanted the right to be able to reap all the financial rewards because they were taking the risk. Uh, basically, they wanted more money. They wanted more control. And I remember reading interviews back in the day when they were they were jumping ship from Marvel that they were like, you know, we don't want some 25-year-old wet-behind-the-ears editorial assistant telling us 
what we can and can't publish. Like we're, we're making mm. so much money for this company. We need to be in complete control. And now you're. Well, you're here going, comes the 25 year old editorial assistants back to tell you what you can and can't do with the union now. Yeah, I'd pull out. I'd be like, fuck you. If you guys are doing this, this isn't the company I I would. You know I would. I just, yeah, I, this is why we need to have more independent studios. And, and, but it doesn't uh, matter. As soon as you have an independent studio and you hire people to help you with an independent yep. studio, that means they get to dictate everything because, well, if their asses weren't in the seats, you know, doing whatever they do, nothing would get done, even though they, they're, you know, not the ones doing the lion's share of the work. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, you know, commenting on this don't realize how Image actually works. This isn't even like Marvel or DC. It's not like you work at the comic book factory, you know, and, and everybody's working under this publisher. It's it's Image is a whole bunch of independent studios, mm -hmm. you know, under that umbrella. And, and they're doing uh, the majority of the work before it even gets to these people. Yeah, they're basically just turning in. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no editorial no. oversight, but in a lot of cases, they, they basically give a produced product to image to publish and distribute and you know uh, as i understand it now i think everybody's deal is a little bit different but yeah these guys are not producing the lion's share of the work mm -mm. they're just they're cat wranglers you know i good luck with that yeah have fun we'll see where it goes we'll see where that goes like again if you don't like it leave yeah um the flip side is you know if they the some of the concerns i think are fair um, and I would I would have given you a pass until you had to go and be like what the real thing is. Same with other ones. It's it's not even about like with Kickstarter, it wasn't even a union about the work the working conditions and the pay. It was a union about we want to control what gets done. So only our friends get a voice. Then go start your own damn company. Problem solved. Oh wait, you can't because one, it's hard, two, it requires money, and three, no one's gonna buy those books and you know it. Yep. Yep. I'm just gonna call it like it is. Yeah, she's working with some other uh, comics crowdfunding thing that I don't think it's going to... Oh, it's not. Have you heard anything else about it? Not really. So yeah, you're dead. Yeah, good luck with that. All right, we got to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.